Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything coming back at you with another Wargaming Miniature video. In this one, we are going to continue our Bolt Action Boot Camp series. In these videos, what we're doing is we are explaining the Bolt Action rules chapter by chapter and then uh, giving a little insight on uh, how that re relates to your game. So it's great for new players as well as veterans alike. In this episode, we are going to be talking about shooting. Uh, it's not any advanced techniques or strategies. We're just talking about the mechanics of how to roll the dice, what the numbers mean, etc. The only two units that can be given, well, there's three actually, can be given a fire order, advance order, or ambush. Okay, so if you give your unit a fire order, they shoot. If you give them an advance order, they move and shoot. And if you give them an advance ambush order, I'm sorry, they wait and shoot a unit that moves into their line of sight, through their line of sight, out of their line of sight, as basically moving. And then they can, or if they, at the end of the turn, they can switch their ambush to fire on a four or better. Okay, how, how does the shooting procedure work? It's actually super easy. That's one of the reasons why I love bolt action. It's because it's a very, it's a non-cumbersome game. I love bolt action. Uh, what you do is you declare a target. I mean, a lot of these are staples of most miniature war games, so it's not going to be anything super surprising. You declare a target, and then your opponent decides if he wants to go down or not, or if he wants to wreck you away. Well, we'll talk about wrecking when we get into vehicles, but right now, he decides if he wants to go down or not. You measure the range, you open fire. You roll the hit, if you get any hits, you roll for damage. If you get any damage, the target removes casualties, and if you need to, they check morale. Okay, so how do you declare a target? Well, you pick a target, and you roll the die, right? You pick a, pick a target that you're gonna shoot at. Normally, that's a single unit, but tanks, a lot of times, have like a machine gun and a cannon. And tanks have the opportunity to split their fire. So they can fire their cannon one location and the machine gun somewhere else. But uh, we're going to be talking about infantry mostly. So you declare your target. So you look at the models, and the ones that can actually shoot into that unit uh, are the ones that get to add their dice. Okay, there is an exception to the infantry. If your infantry has a one-shot weapon, like a Panzerfaust or something like that, all the rifles can shoot at, let's say, an infantry squad, and the Panzerfaust would be able to shoot at the tank. Okay, intervening friendly models. Let's say this machine gun is here, and this squad is... I'm just going to line them up perfectly, you know, behind this unit here. Like that, right? Okay, hypothetically, let's just say that you got this machine gun, it's already fired, it's got a fire order, or it's ambushed, or whatever, it's already finished with its turn. And then you're going with, I'm going to use a fire order on these guys as well. Okay, and so now when you do that, you measure from the model to the models, right? And there has to be no obscuring terrain, as well as your shot cannot travel within one inch of a friendly unit. So you have to understand that there's like a little force field, a little bubble that's one inch around that unit that your shots cannot go through. So if this guy was going to try to shoot at this guy, the shot goes within one inch of his friendly unit, he cannot fire. Same with this guy, he cannot fire. So these three guys are actually blocked by this guy. The guys on the outside, they can fire because he's not intervening. He's They would be able to shoot without risking hitting these guys. If he's not there and your squad is all like that, all of them can fire. You can shoot through your own squad as if it's one solid unit. So, so you can shoot through your own squad just not second squads or second intervening friendly units. So you have a bunch of guys all together. You just measure from every one of them because they can freely shoot through their friendlies as long as it's in the same squad. 
when you declare you're going to shoot at someone, I'm going to shoot at these guys, right, over here. American player decides if he wants to go down or not. If he decides to go down, then you pull one of his die out of the uh, bag and you place it there. He's basically opted to go down. If he's already moved or he's already done something, right, and you shoot at him, he cannot change that to down. He has to take it in the chin because he's already or he's already acted. Okay, let's talk about vehicles that you normally would not be able to hurt. This squad because they're all rifles or submachine guns, would not be able to hurt this guy in any way, shape, or form. So if this vehicle was here, all of these models would still be able to shoot them because you can travel within an inch of the model. Can't shoot through it, obviously, but you can shoot within an inch because you don't risk hurting the tank because you're not gonna, he's not gonna be in the way. Okay, if you're, you and your opponent designate the woods as dense terrain, where uh, it would be considered like heavy underbrush, thick woods, something like that, where you would not be able to shoot through it, um, then you would measure the lines of sight, but there's no one inch gap around it like an enemy, like a friendly unit. You just measure directly right along the edge of it. That's fine. If you have a unit that's up on a hill and you have friendly units in the way, what you'll need to do is Imagine that one inch circle that we drew around the unit. Imagine there's a one inch uh, piece above the unit also. So if the force field is 360 degrees around the model, so then if your tank's up here and he can see the enemy without going through this one inch, I don't know if I'm displaying that correctly. Uh, so imagine there's like a one inch force field around this guy and if I got a tank up here, I can shoot down I'm okay. I'm okay as long as my shot doesn't go through that one inch gap. If there's a building here, right, and I've got a tank up elevated and I can shoot down, it can just barely miss the building. That's fine. Uh, this does not have the terrain doesn't have the one inch gap only for the one inch force field. The uh, only troops do and only troops that you would normally be able to damage. Okay, the moment you've all been waiting for the uh, shooting, rolling to hit and damage. Uh, first of all, we determine that the what the range of the weapons that you're shooting are. Uh, he's got a submachine gun, and there are four rifles. Okay, because they have rifles, uh, they're within 24 inches, so they're in range. But if they are within half range, they don't get the minus one. So basically, if you shoot half range or over half range, you get a minus one to hit your opponent. So it's important to measure to make sure they're all within 12 inches. And none of them are within 12 inches. If, for some reason, I was set up a little bit differently like this, and this guy is not within 12 inches, but this guy is within 12 inches of any one of the models in the unit, he doesn't get a minus one. He does not get a minus one. He does get a minus one. He does get a minus one. Okay, so I've got two guys with a minus one here and two guys with that are in short range. There are hit modifiers. When you roll, you roll one die per rate of fire depending on the weapon. Okay, so I've got a rate of fire of one for every one of these rifles, but I'm going to be rolling only two dice at a time because these two have a different modifier from this. Now, I could technically roll two different colored dice and say that these are the long-range shots and these are the close-range shots if you want to speed things up. Okay, so now what are my target numbers? Well, you're always looking for a three or better. A three or better. Three, four, five, or a six. If it's long-range, minus one. So you're looking for a four, five, or a six. So for these guys, I'm looking for a three. These guys, I'm looking for a four. It can also be modified by pins. If this squad had a pin marker on it, then all my rolls would be minus one. We're going to assume they do have a pin. Okay, so we're going to say threes normally, pin needs four. Threes, long range, four, pin, fives. So these guys need fours, 
these guys need fives. It's that simple. You go through it, you roll, shake up the dice, roll it. Did I get any fives out of these guys? No. Did I get any fours out of these guys? Yes. I got a hit. Okay. So what that means is I've hit the unit, so that unit gets a pin automatically. Now I have to roll to wound or to hurt that person. Okay. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Let's go back to the shooting, and there might be some other modifiers that you might would like to know about. Like, if your troops are inexperienced, they get a minus one. If your opponent is down, you get a minus two. If it's a small unit, what do they mean by that? Two figures or less, you get a minus one. If they're in soft cover, you get a minus one. If they're in hard cover, you get a minus two. If you moved and fired, you get an additional minus one. Okay, so you got all those minuses. Those are those are the only modifiers there are. It was super. I played one game and had all the modifiers memorized. You can memorize it. There's one additional plus one. If you're within six inches of your opponent, that is point blank, and you get a plus one to hit. So. Point blank, plus one. Every pin, minus one. So you could have 100 minus ones. Long range, minus one. Inexperienced, minus one. If you move, minus one. Small unit, minus one. Soft cover, minus one. Hard cover and down, minus two. So far so good? Good to go. Now, with all those modifiers, let's say you're inexperienced, moving, you have a pin on you, they're down, they're also in hard cover, and your target number is like a bajillion. Okay, let's figure it out. Let's figure it out. It starts at three. You got a pin. That's four. Hard cover. Six. Down. Eight. Inexperienced. Nine. I moved. Ten. Let's just say I got to roll a ten to hit. Guess what? You can still hit. It's called a nigh impossible shot. So you roll a die. If you were to get a six to hit, you roll a second die. And if it also comes up a six, you hit anything that was seven or better. So it's still worth the attempt. I mean, it's not like you're counting bullets, so, uh, but I got a five. I hit him. Okay. And remember, if you hit, you score a pin. Doesn't have to damage him. Now we're going to roll the damage, okay? And it's, it's based on the quality of the target that you're shooting at. So if these guys are regulars, they have a four or better to damage them. The way that works is infantry and artillery are the same. Vehicles are a little bit different. Inexperienced, three are better to hurt them. Regular is four better to hurt them. And veterans are five or better to hurt them. So because these guys are regulars, I only need a four or better. And I hit once. I roll again. I didn't get a four or better. So nobody dies. If I rolled a four, my opponent would pick one of his guys, even the guy that might be out of range. But if he's in the unit, he can pick him. And he kills him. He goes, oh, I'm going to kill his rifleman, right? And he just takes him off the board. He's dead. If I roll a six instead, there's a chance that that becomes what's called exceptional damage. I roll again, and if I happen to get another six, I get to pick which model is killed. So I say, I want to kill your BAR gunner or whatever. I want to kill your NCO. I want to kill your bazooka man or whatever I wanted to kill. Double sixes on damage. Now, if I have two hits, let's say I hit them twice, and I roll two dice, and they both come up sixes, that doesn't mean that's a double six. What that means is I have two chances for exceptional damage. So then I would roll two more dice, and if either one of these came up six, that means I would be able to pick one, and he would pick the second one. I've got six guys out here, right? Now we're going to be talking about the effects of the casualties. I'm not going to roll any dice, just show you. If this guy shoots at this guy, 
and I lose two models. No morale is needed. You have to lose 50% of your models from each shot, from each uh, unit shooting at you. Two out of six is not 50%. Let's say another unit is over here and they shoot and they kill one more guy. That's not 50% of the guys that are left. Even though it's they're now at 50%, it doesn't matter. It has to come from one unit. So this unit, if it doesn't kill 50%, no morale. If that, ha if that second unit had killed two guys, that would be 50% of what's left. And this unit would be required to take a morale check. How do you do a morale check? It's done exactly like an order test. Uh, you roll the two dice, and you're trying to get less than their morale value, and with having been pinned, or I should say hit from this unit and hit from this unit, they would have two pins on them. So this unit normally has a 9, with the two pins would be a 7. They have to roll a 7 or less to, uh, to pass, and they pass, so no effect. But if I failed that roll, then the unit is destroyed. Just pick up all the models and take the order die out of the bag and give it to your opponent. A lot of times uh, you count that as like victory points. Ambush fire. Let's say that unit's there, this unit's here, but it's already on ambush. Then I draw a green die, or a, right, an American die. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move these guys. Well, I'm going to maybe move them into cover is what I'm thinking, right? So I'm going to give them an advance order. Uh, the reason why I'm giving them an advance order is because you can't run over a fence or a wall. That's an obstacle. You can't do it. So I'm going to give them an advance order. So I lean down. I'm getting ready to move. And my opponent says, hey, I'm on ambush. I'm shooting you before you get a chance to get over that wall and get into cover. Okay, so at that point, you change this to a fire order. You measure, you shoot, just like normal. And then once he's done shooting, whatever happened to these guys, I finish my movement. So let's say, hypothetically, he shoots, he gets a hit, it gives me a pin, uh, maybe even kills a guy, um, and then I finish my turn. Now, I've already given them the advance order. They've already begun the advance order, so by adding a pin does not mean I have to now automatically stop and do a order test. I've already passed that step, right? The order test came at the start of when I issued the order, and since I didn't have a pin at that time, I automatically finish conducting my move order. So then I take my guys and I move them into cover. If I said I wanted to run up this way, right? Or if I wanted to advance up this way, and you're on ambush. Let's say he, this guy's on ambush, and he sees he sees me advancing. He doesn't have to shoot until I'm done moving. He can shoot at any point along my movement. So I advance, I get my six inches, I think I'm doing good, I'm going to be able to shoot this guy, I'm going to be able to get into close range maybe, and, and then, then he shoots. Now, all of his guys, even this, okay, this guy's within six, so he's point blank. He's point blank. He's point blank. He's just in close range. But now he's at long range. So all of these guys will get to shoot. Some of them will be on point blank. Yeah. Kick ass. Okay. Let's say I've got a unit over here, and they're not moving. I'm on ambush. They're not moving. I say, okay, well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna shoot you because you're on ambush. I'm not gonna move. I'm just gonna fire. So I measure my shots. I take my hits or whatever. Blah 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 blah. They get a pin. Okay, if I, back up. If I shoot these guys and I hit these guys and I cause a pin, that's fine. If I'm on ambush, okay, let's say these guys declare they're gonna shoot at these guys, and I'm on ambush, I can opt because they haven't actually resolved their shot. I can opt to go down if I want. I change my ambush to a down. If I am on ambush, if I'm on ambush and this unit decides to move and I shoot them, they cannot change to down. Why? Because they've already been given an order to move. 
so they can't go down. They just have to take it in the chin. So you can't really react. You can't react to ambush fire. Ambush can only be used against people that have moved. So you have to be uh, advancing, uh, running, or even escaping, or, or anything like that. As long, or even regrouping after a melee. If you move, you can be ambushed. It, back to if this guy fires, causes a pin. This guy's already on ambush. He didn't go down. Now it's the end of the turn. I didn't get a chance to shoot anybody. I can opt to do one of two things. I can leave the ambush, or I can change it to a fire, but I still have to roll a die. It's one through, or I mean, four or better, actually. So if I roll a four or better, I did. This can go to a fire order, and I can shoot, whether I've got a pin on them or not. Because I'm not making an order test. I'm just doing the end of turn. I've already given them their order, which was ambush, at the uh, start of the turn. That was before I took the pin. So uh, technically, the pin comes after I was issuing the order. Uh, they're just interpreting their ambush as shooting, as shooting, even someone that's stationary, because it moved to a fire. I hope I didn't lose you on that one. Ambush is kind of tricky. All right, that's the end of shooting. I hope I explained how to shoot, um, and I hope you learned something. And if not, uh, leave a comment in the description below. And uh, that's going to be the end of this week's boot camp. Uh, we're going to move on to weapon special rules, close assaults, and uh, some okay, let me see. Uh, special unit types like headquarters and, and artillery spotters. We're also going to be talking about special unit rules like bicycles, cavalry, snipers. We'll, we'll be talking about artillery and buildings and vehicles in depth, actually. There's a lot of rules on vehicles. We'll be talking about all those in future videos. All right, so that's the end of the first week of Bolt Action Boot Camp. And uh, I don't know how often I'll be uploading these videos, maybe once a day or something like that. And come back for our second half of Bolt Action Boot Camp next week. I'll see you then.